Hey guys, I'm Nick. Today on Fish Facts, we're gonna talk about the spotted sea trout, commonly referred to as a speckled trout or speck or yellow mouth, depending on what region you live in in the United States. We usually just call them speckled trout. It's interesting to see all the different names for them. Obviously, sometimes we refer to them as big old yellow mouth because a big trout comes and shake its head and you can see the yellow mouth on the surface. It's pretty interesting to see the different names. We're going to start off with some interesting facts and we'll move into some details about reproduction and conservation. One interesting fact is the world record speckled trout is 17.7 pounds with 39 inches long. That's crazy. That's a monster of a trout. It's bigger than some of the redfish we have swimming around in our bay system. Um, I imagine that was a crazy experience. Just absolute monster. Um, I'm going to use my cell phone to touch bases on some of these facts. Obviously, I knew a lot of them going into this stuff, but I read some research paper uh, about from Alabama, Mississippi about speckled trout. It's pretty interesting. It opened your eyes to some additional information that I didn't even know. So I'm going to reference my phone just to make that stuff much easier. All right. You guys ready? Tons and tons of interesting facts. All right. We'll start off with simple stuff. Speckled trout are a member of the drum family. When they are spawning, the males use drumming to get the females to come into the area and for them to lay their eggs. Very, very interesting. you also notice when you catch male trout sometimes, they will drum when they are in distress. It's an easy way to identify them and it will help you out in the future. Obviously, the majority of you have caught speckled trout before. You've noticed the two canines at the top of their upper jaw. Those are used to bite and hold on to prey. A lot of times, adult speckled trout will feed primarily on bait fish, whether it's mullet, menhaden, croakers, and they will bite them, hold on to them, and then swallow them whole. Canines are a very, very important part of how they feed. Commonly, people will refer to things as anglers will be like, I got a short strike. Well, what is happening? Those trout are coming up and they're biting the lure because the lure is pretty big. It's bigger than a normal prey. They're not trying to swallow it whole until they bite it first and hold on. You will have those short strikes, and that's what's happening. That's why some guys will be like, oh, man, I just missed a the trout. They feed differently than other species, and once you fish enough, you have an idea of exactly what is going on. All right, let's see. Let's talk about production, okay? Uh, reproduction, sorry. Trout can become sexually mature at two to four years old. That's crazy. And they can live from 15 to 18 years. Another crazy interesting fact. There's a study in Alabama, and it showed that 30% of female trout, 30% of female trout begin spawning at 11 inches long, with 100% of female trout spawning by 14 inches in length. That's crazy. So this is a species that, Within the first few years of its life, at one year old, it can reproduce. That's amazing. That doesn't happen in a lot of different species. It doesn't happen in redfish. It doesn't happen in black drum. Instantly out of the gate, they can just start reproduction. They can spawn. They're not going to put out as big numbers as the older female trout, but they're still putting out eggs and helping the ecosystem, which is incredible. Um, a four-year-old female speckled trout can produce 150,000 eggs per batch as in every time she spawns which is also interesting during a spawning season a speckled trout will spawn between 9 and 60 times and can release between 3 million and 20 million eggs that's incredible those numbers are unreal for a for a trout one trout to put out that many eggs and then the trout fishery slowly decline as it has it's very, very interesting. There are definitely problems with the fishery, whether it be overfishing from recreational anglers, commercial anglers, maybe just the ecosystem itself slowly degrading with all the houses being built and the pollution and the lack of habitat. Very, very interesting how a species that you know puts out so many eggs is having a trouble sustaining a population. It's crazy interesting to think about. Within 70 days of hatching, a speckled trout will be three inches long. It's pretty quick, okay? And think, three inches long, they're getting eaten by everything to include themselves. I know a lot of guys who, <coughs> excuse me, their favorite color lures are painted like speckled trout. Speckled trout eat other speckled trout. It's been known for, you know, everyone I know knows that it happens. So although they're producing huge numbers of eggs, the chances of those fish reaching maturity are very, very slim. Even once they reach maturity, you have ospreys, and, you know, dolphins and everything else eating them. 
I imagine being a speckled trout is a very hard lifestyle. We're going to move on. We're going to talk a little bit about trout migration. It's a huge misconception that all trout travel to the river systems during the winter months. There's a study that was done in Alabama, and it said 53% of the trout never left the estuary they were born in. Like, never left. Did not move. Always in the same spot. That's interesting. In that study, they found one fish that traveled 20 miles. That's it. One fish, 20 miles. There was another study done on a fish that it was tagged in Apalachicola, Florida, and it traveled 315 miles west, and it was found in Louisiana. Could have been in a storm, could have been in a hurricane, could have had a huge reason to move, could have just been lost, all right? You never know, but typically speaking, they don't move that far. The studies show that the majority of trout will stay within five miles of where they were born. That means that a fish in the Santa Rosa Sound in the middle of summer is not going to make its way to our river systems in Escambia or Blackwater or Yellow River. They're not going to travel that far. They're going to hunker down in the channel. They're going to spend time in the little boat canals. They're going to spend time in some small creeks. They're going to come up and feed when the sun's out and the water's warm and the bait's on the flats. Very interesting. I know there's a ton of people in our local area here of Navarre and Pensacola that are like, all the fish go to the rivers. That's not true. Some of my best trout days ever have been in the middle to late December, January-ish, and in the north side of the center of the sound, and they're just been on fire. That is a fantastic fishery year-round. Stop looking into this river system as the fish are leaving so far. The pattern changes and you need to adjust your fishing to the pattern. Fish aren't necessarily migrating and leaving the area. They just feed differently than they do in the summer during the winter. Interesting. Think about it. You'll catch more fish. All right. Adult trout. They feed primarily on fish, shrimp, and crabs. When they're smaller, they pretty much eat a whole bunch of tiny little stuff that like, I don't know, little pods and little crazy stuff. And then they can eat because they're super, super tiny. As they get bigger, they don't have to feed as much because they're going to feed on a larger prey. Like a 25-inch trout, his goal is to eat a large menhaden or a large mullet or a big trout and not eat 7,000 shrimp, okay? Let's see here. Boom. Boom. Everyone knows that speckled trout feed primarily in low-light conditions. But everybody only considers the fact that they're ambush predators. No one considers the fact that if a speckled trout was in a foot of water trying to feed in the middle of the day, they are a very, very easy target for birds, whether it be a bald eagle, an osprey, or anything else. They're not very hardy. They don't have many scales. They're just not going to hold up well. So if an osprey comes by and dive bombs on a trout, it's dead. If it dive bombs on a redfish, probably not so much. They're much hardier fish. It's going to be heavier. They're denser. The the bird's not going to be able to pick them up. That is one of the reasons the trout do not feed in shallow water. Now, those trout will move to deeper water where visibility is not as good and the birds can't reach them and they will feed the entire time the current is moving. Keep that stuff in mind next time you go fishing. The sun's not always your enemy. They just behave different than some species. It's important. It'll help you catch more fish. Now we're going to move in and we're going to talk a bit about conservation. As everyone knows, I really mean it. Education, you know, sorry, conservation starts with education. And it's the only way our fisheries will exist five to ten years from now. Because if we don't do anything, you know, individually, it's never going to stop going downhill. Currently, Florida's split into a few different regions and every region has a different limit of speckled trout. The Northwest region currently exists as five trout per person with one over 20. That is in the middle of being overhauled and by 2020, it should be changed a bit or at least the spring of 2020. Um, The proposed changes were to lower the limit from five to three. Uh, We'll see what happens. Ideally, what needs to be done in the future is if we know that a one-year-old trout produces X amount of eggs and a five-year-old trout produces five times the amount of a one-year-old trout, we have to start harvesting, we have to stop harvesting those older fish. So if we're killing a five-year-old fish that is 20 inches long every day, 
you might as well be killing five 14 inch trout. That stuff's gonna add up drastically, especially once you start looking at the compounding interest of what that big fish will do to a fishery over a lifetime. Then you start looking at these fish that may be 15, 18 years old, and they are producing up to 20 million eggs in one summer. That is a huge amount of eggs. Now those eggs obviously are gonna be eaten by other predators as eggs. They're gonna be, you know, when they first hatch, they're gonna be eaten by everything, birds, minnows, everything's gonna eat them. So the chances of them reaching maturity are already slim. And then once they reach maturity, dolphins, birds, humans, they have a ton of other predators on the list of wants to kill them. So if you're gonna go out and catch a limited trout, a 17 inch trout tastes far better than a 24 inch trout anyway. So my goal is to always keep a 17 inch trout. If I don't keep trout very often, I've, I've probably personally killed for myself. I don't think I killed any trout this year for myself, actually. It's just not for me. I, I don't do it. We do kill some trout for clients from time to time, but we also have a client base that is like, hey, I only need two trout. So we'll catch two trout and kill two trout. We'll let the rest of them go. And that's awesome. And that is conservation. Only take what you plan to eat that day. Don't fill your freezer up and let it go bad. I know a lot of guys who do it. This is not Louisiana. And if you know much about the Louisiana fishery or talk to anyone over there, their fishery has been declining for decades because over harvesting. Uh, There's going to come a point where That stuff has to stop or future generations won't be able to go fishing. It's painful to think about it. I have a bunch of kids. I want them to be able to enjoy the fishery I enjoyed. But even in the last seven to 10 years, I've got to watch this fishery just go downhill at a very rapid pace, mostly because of overfishing, whether it be recreational or commercial. There's no reason to point fingers. Everyone has to take a cut. The idea of commercially trout fishing kind of blows my mind. Yeah, you want to try go catch it yourself. You're gonna go buy that thing. They're not that hard to catch. They should probably do something about that. I don't like it, but I don't have any say in that. It's just how I feel. It's an opinion. I'd like to hear your guys' standpoints on the conservation fact. I'm happy about them lowering it from five to three. Uh, I think it'll better help you police yourself because unfortunately, we live in a world where People don't police themselves. If there were no limits on redfish, they'd, they'd be gone again because people would catch you know 20 slot reds and be like, I'm keeping them all. Or they'd throw a net on a school of bull reds. That's what would happen. Same thing with the speckled trout. Once you get on a good trout bite, it's very easy to just toss them all in the cooler and be like, hey, I filled the cooler up. And you killed all the fish. Now they can't reproduce. That's what's been happening with a ton of fish in our fisheries. That stuff's going to change in the near future, whether you like it or not or there just won't be any left. I feel like FWC is probably a few years behind on this. They probably should have lowered it to three several years ago before the decline was too bad. Uh, And I feel like the next few years, you can start to see some pretty painful numbers in the trout fishery. But we will see. Those are my experience to be on the water 180 plus days a year. Speckled trout are pretty interesting. There's tons and tons of facts. We could go into more details on how to catch them. But that'll be for another video. Let me know your thoughts on the conservation below. Tell me where you're from. Tell me where you fish. Tell me how your trout population is doing in those areas. I look forward to reading it. And as always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. Have a good day.